Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing amazing. Today we're going to do another one of those late night Q&A question episodes. Something more chill. Um, I went on Instagram and Discord. I asked us some of your questions. So we're just going to look at them at random. I have not gone through them just yet. But inshallah we'll do that now. I find it hilarious if anything how I call this series late night Q&A. And I upload it when it's 12pm out for me. But the thing is it's 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 about the upload time okay it's about the upload time it's about the upload schedule queens and it's not my fault if my uploading schedule is during the day okay but it really shows out because some of my audience it's like night there so it's still gonna be kept late night q a's honestly at this point i'm absolutely dead because look at the ratio of these questions it goes so serious and then one person just wrote this right so somebody's like how do you deal with fatigue and burnout during Ramadan. By the way, I'm recording this during Ramadan. I hope I upload this during Ramadan or at least a little after Ramadan. So something that I shared during regards to Ramadan can be helpful because a lot of these questions are talking about Ramadan. I'm going to try to upload this in Ramadan. Can we do that? We can try. We can try our best. Inshallah, we can. Okay. So a lot of these questions like Ramadan this, Ramadan that, somebody wrote, can you do a story time like you did in one of them, like about how you almost burnt your house down? <laughs> oh, this person's so funny. And the same person wrote, something else like more serious and they're like how's your ramadan going so sweet y'all are hilarious okay so let's just start from one place so what's your favorite part about ramadan alhamdulillah um and how's ramadan going i see the one repeating first of all when ramadan came i did not expect okay this is gonna sound like such a cop-out i truly mean it though and i'm not trying to sound like a cop-out I didn't think anybody, like my listeners, would text me Ramadan Mubarak. Okay, just listen before you're like, oh my god, her, you're being such a cop. No, like I really didn't think they would. Because like I just posted a quick little thing on my story and I was like, okay, Ramadan Mubarak. And then like I inserted a link for this dua PDF that everyone hounded my DMs for. Y'all, I love y'all. But my DMs were like, hey girl, you talked about this in your Ramadan goals. Where are that? And it's linked in my resource section of my bio. And so I was just sharing that. Anyway, so I didn't think people would text me Ramadan Mubarak. Some people like stood up on the story. They're like, okay, Ramadan Mubarak. And I was like, okay, that's so sweet. Like, thanks. But then like I had people like genuinely just like take time and be like, hey, Ramadan Mubarak. I hope you're okay. I was like, whoa, you remember me? That's so kind. It would made my day, bro. So thank you so much to everyone who did text me Ramadan Mubarak. I know I replied to you like a week late saying, hey, Mubarak, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. It's I'm sorry. It happens. Okay, I'm sorry. But alhamdulillah, my favorite part about Ramadan, I think oh, this is okay. You know, what? I'm about to go on a tangent right now. Like, I didn't even think that this would happen. But let me tell you, I was literally in a conversation with somebody about this yesterday and it blows my mind because this lines up so well. So obviously in Ramadan, we all love the aspect of reading Quran more, praying more, whatever in the third and like being with our communities, going out to the masajid more, becoming just the better Muslim that you can be, increasing in faith. Like we all love those things. Of course, another thing that Ramadan, like it really teaches you to not waste time because every time you're sitting there, you're just scrolling mindlessly. You're like, bro, I can literally be reading a juz right now. Get up. And so like, you know, it really helps you not waste time and whatever. But there's one thing in particular that this Ramadan that I feel like I've really, really learned and I'm learning. So right now it's still Ramadan when I'm recording this. But in the beginnings of Ramadan, by the way, the beginnings of Ramadan when I'm recording this. But one thing that I've already learned, and it's been almost a week or so, is this. You are truly, and I know that we say this a lot, but like in life, you're truly in no obligation to like deal with those half relationships. And I feel like Ramadan and just going ghost taught me so much. I feel like year around so many times in life, you feel like you have to constantly keep a boat flowing, check in on people, do this to people, be there, do this, do that. And that's great. And you should, right? For those mutual relationships. So those relationships that care about you, those people that love you, those people that are there for you, those people that make, you know, things right for you, those people that are trying to make things right for you, whatever it might be like, that's fine, right? But like, sometimes I feel like Ramadan, it just teaches you to change your priorities so drastically. And like my priorities before Ramadan, of course, like I, I obviously prioritize deen and whatnot, but with school, there's so much to constantly be worried about that like since Ramadan came, I come to a point where I'm like, bro, like school's here year around, like leave me alone, leave me alone. I'm going to go read some Quran. And it's like, it's honestly been so much more better for my mental health. And if honestly, if I'm going to be honest, it, it's looking better too academically i feel like it's looking better too because the way that i go about it now is like 
if I'm frustrated, I got too much to do, whatever, whatever, like, it's just looking like an overwhelming amount, I'm not gonna burn myself out and try to do it in a day, I'll be like, okay, look, whatever gets done, gets done, if not, guess what, I'm still gonna have my reading Quran time every day, and so the schedule that I've been doing for Ramadan, in particular on the days when I am at home, is that I wake up and I do, like, whatever homework stuff, boring stuff in the morning to kind of get it over with then after a certain time i'm like done like i don't care if i still have work i don't care who's ringing my phone i don't care who's calling me everything's going on silent i've been putting my phone on a sleep mode 24 7 and it's so bad because this is not something to be proud of but i put my phone on sleep mode all the time and so like you know when you put your phone on sleep mode like it, you could get your whole screen turned gray and like everything mutes off all your alarms are gone no one can call you no one can text you yeah that's what i've been doing i put my phone on sleep mode i'm like leave me alone everybody leave me alone and i go and i just read quran i just do whatever i want in regards to ramadan and it's amazing and i love doing it i recommend people do it as well just and especially like getting that setting that makes your phone screen turn gray. I know basically all phones have it. It is so good, bro. Because when you see your, you get tempted to that mindless scroll and you pick up your phone, your phone screen's gray. You really don't want to go through that whole thing of opening up your phone and like switching out of the sleep mode. And I, I get caught up and I'm like, bro, I don't want to do all that. So I just throw it back to the side. <laughs> Which, by the way, yes, my text backs this Ramadan have been below mid like before my text back game is mid okay like i can i can pull a leg in armor i can do it if need be right before my text back game was like three to four amazon business days now it's like 12 15 days something shipping from like china or like across out of the u.s basically something from out of the u.s delivery business days that's how rough it's been but here's the thing here's the thing listen 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 here's the thing before i sound like those people that have a hard time communicating i don't have a hard time communicating i'm just not a text person i don't like texts like that i just if i like when i talk to people i love of course still keeping in contact with them during ramadan i just send voice notes or whatever but like text is just not for me right it's just not the vibe for me or like video calling i like to do that too but like text is just mm, for me you know so I feel like in Ramadan, this whole putting your phone on sleep mode is so beneficial and I love doing it, bro. If you aren't leaving your home and like you're at home or whatever, you're praying Tarawi at home, whatever, like do it. Definitely get your phone off. But if you're going out, don't do that. Because if you're like me, y'all, mid story tap, and I didn't even plan the story time, but look, we're killing two birds with one stone. Not even joking, my family and me, right? There's like this, this ongoing problem that I had when I was very, very young. And it was a tragedy. And it's something that I'm still getting out of. I swear it's not a first world problem. And there's worse things in the world. Okay. But this was like, so toxic not to break out of this. I have a horrible habit of putting my phone on mute. And so if you call me, um, good luck, throw a brick at me, throw a pigeon, send a pigeon, send a pigeon to me with a little letter, because I put my phone on mute. Like, it's just a thing, right? Even when I'm out, it's horrible. Not a good thing to do, okay? And when I got my first phone, oh my god, y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even want to know the stories of my first phone and how that went. Oh my god, I can go on forever. When I got my first phone, I think I was like 13 or 14, right? And obviously because my parents wanted to keep in contact with me, I was going to middle school, mm -mm, you know, all that and a third. So my parents wanted to keep contact with me, whatever. I got my first phone around that age and it was whatever. But I had a problem where I always put my phone on mute. And so parents called me once. Okay, didn't answer. Came home. Why didn't you pick up? We called you. Oh, sorry, phone was on mute. Okay. Parents called me twice. Next time, maybe the next Thursday at school, we were calling you. We were asking you to come home. You didn't pick up the phone. Then, okay, someday I went to the grocery store. My parents were calling me. I didn't pick up. Oh, my phone was in my purse. I couldn't hear it. My volume was low. It was in my purse. My purse was here. I was here. This was here. Like, you know, every color of the horizon. It was just, the excuses were just flying. Ultimately, at some point, my sister kind of had the same problem where she also used to put her phone on mute. So it's like when we used to go out, my parents were like, what What the hell? How do we talk to y'all? Because y'all got this problem where you put your phones on mute. And before you used to leave the house, our parents used to be like, okay, turn on your phone phone. Matter of fact, let us watch you turn it on. Let's turn it on. But it's like, you know, those subconscious things that your finger just does? Yeah. And so what I used to do was I used to low-key set my sister up. And I, I'm pretty sure she knows this. If she doesn't, she'll know now. I was like, look, I used to go leave the house. I'd be like, mom, when we're gone, call my sister. Don't call me. 
okay call my sister because you know like i can't hear my phone through my purse whatever call my sister my sister used to have her phone on me too and i so did i but that way she would get in trouble and i wouldn't of course over time my parents got pissed about it like they were not happy and so i think i got my phone taken away like nine or ten times simply because i didn't pick up the phone when they used to call me and rightfully so like now that i'm older i think about that i was like that's crazy because like your parents are at home worried or like sometimes you'd be out in the evening and like my parents would be worried like okay when are you gonna come home with your sister or whatever or like if i was at school like they would call and i just wouldn't pick up because i wouldn't hear and then when i would see and get the notification that they called i'd be too scared to call back because the first thing would be why is your phone on mute <laughs> because i don't know how to fight that so basically they took my phone like a lot when i was young and literally like not for any serious reason just okay you know what you don't even need a phone because it's not like you use it my parents gave me that lecture all the time they were like you don't even use it what's the point what's the point the point is to communicate the point is to use this to call okay you don't do that so Mm -hmm. and then they eventually like as i grew up like i i fixed i fixed that and i don't do it anymore now since i started putting my phone on sleep mode i do miss calls and like this morning i missed like a few calls from my dad and i saw them and like it was like the 13 year old me came out again and i didn't call him back because he called my sister <laughs> and i didn't call him back because i was like bro if i call him back the first thing i'm gonna say is hera your phone's on mute what's going on <laughs> so i didn't call him back but it's all good it's all good but long story short, it is beneficial to put your phone on like sleep mode or just mute, especially when you're like praying thoroughly and whatnot, especially if you're at home. But do it at your own risk, especially if your parents are the type of parents that are going to call you. As I was saying originally, though, one of the things that I really love about Ramadan is that, again, like I'm just not being I feel like those relationships. OK, this is about to go to another spiral. We're just spiraling at this point. I feel like so many relationships have awkward barriers it's one thing to have boundaries things that you're comfortable sharing things that you're not comfortable sharing right like those borderlines those are that's different i feel like so many friendships have awkward barriers and one of the next questions is how do you deal with fake friends and just putting up with a situation regarding fake friends so this awkward barrier that i felt like with some people like you know in some relationships that awkward barrier where like it's very formal very courtesy very like and it's you're cool with this person y'all are not acquaintances y'all are not best friends y'all are friends y'all are a little bit more than just friends like y'all are in the middle like with your girlfriends obviously um but it's just kind of like that awkward barrier and that awkward barrier i feel like a lot of people don't talk about it but that kind of that awkward barrier and like your friendships where like it's hard to find like that one person that you can like always talk to or like call up at your worst and not have to feel like you have to do any courtesies with them or like any form formalities with them right like feeling like you have to ease in your, your way into this thing like i have a friend that like when i talk to her we can show up to each other and just say whatever and it's okay right alhamdulillah and so the thing is i feel like with those friendships where there's constant like courtesy constant formalities and constant like opening openings kind of i don't know how to say openings like you cannot just go up and talk to this person and be like hey i'm not feeling so good whatever the third and like you can be close to this person and shockingly believe it or not in some friendships for years and years and years and years you have that this isn't about some little friendship, some acquaintance, no. Like, in some friendships for years and years and years and years, you can have that problem where you don't necessarily feel wholly comfortable to just kind of talk about what it is as it is and not feel the need to, like, sugarcoat or, like, have a formality. Quite frankly, in my opinion, a lot of friendships have been ruined because of that, too. Because so many relationships are built off of you do this and I do this, you do this and I do this. And rightfully so, in some cases, that is the thing. But in some cases, it's kind of like difficult because the formality, no one wants to everyone wants to get to the other side of the formality but no one's making it because everybody's still caught up in the same basics oh i hope you're okay how are you and not actually asking like how are you really and no one's being truthful about how they really are and again like that can also be a boundary thing where you don't feel comfortable sharing that's a different thing but with some people like you just gotta you gotta be careful about how you say and what you say and i feel like it really much varies per friendship with some friendships like you could be friends with this person for years and like you just don't feel that comfortable to just go up to them and tell them like what's going on 
right? Like you can have a best friend that you grew up with and still not feel comfortable to just text them at like 3 a.m. when you're down bad and be like, hey, bro, are you free to talk? Like you just feel like you constantly have to have formality. And I don't know. I don't think I'm making sense to everybody, but I feel like the people who get it, get it. And in some cases, if it's like a fake friend, that's a whole other thing, right? I feel like fake friends and just dealing with people that are ge- not genuine. It's like finding a genuine person is so hard but living and being around people that are not genuine just for the sake of it is probably even harder. I feel like you really gain nothing from keeping fake friends around you. You think that you need the company. I'm so lonely. You are so incredibly lonely with them too. Really, you're not gaining anything out of it. Not keeping any fake friends or people that just give you off vibes, people that give you sus vibes, people that seem like they want to see you succeed, but they get salty the second you beat them no no i don't like that and i don't recommend anybody to put up with fake friends i met a girl one time okay here we go again story time part two story times are going crazy anyway i knew somebody and she's she's a really cool person alhamdulillah um and i bet the people she hangs around with are as well alhamdulillah nothing like that but she had a humongous social circle like her social circle filled levels like it was far more than anybody really I've ever been in my life <laughs> it was humongous and she was one day telling me she's like you know in my social circle I have to be incredibly careful because it looks like we are all buddy buddy but like you can you have to watch what you say because one thing goes from one place to everywhere and it's not something she likes to be around but it, in essence at the same time it's like you know the few good people are part of the bigger social circle and that's kind of how it is for a lot of people where you have a few good friends and you might be part of a bigger social circle where you might feel like some other people are quote quote fake or some other people are like this or you feel like it's so awkward for me to stop being friends with a certain group of people because my this friend is a mutual friend with them whatever in the third but in my honest opinion i just feel like when you grow older and this is also something that i think i feel like in like middle school high school like those friendships like if you want them to last a lifetime okay cool they will but i feel like in essence you need to realize that it really isn't about how and where you meet a person it's more about that situation on how you're going to maintain it i have a friend who is soon going to be graduating and she sat down with me and she talked to me she's like look I see you so often, but I wanted to ask you about how and what I can do to make sure that we keep going the way that me and you are. And she's like, I know you have a little bit of a text problem, but I just want you to know that I understand and whatever. Like we were talking about it. And the thing is like the friendships you make, like you want these to be people that come to your wedding. You want these to be people that you are okay with letting your kids be around you want these to be people that are there with you on those big milestones you don't want to have to hide these big milestones from them because you fear them giving you evil eye or you feel them you know being a type of way or being jealous or whatever in the third that people say you really don't want to be around fake people and put up with it for a time passer the thing here is like time passers i personally i don't invest in time passing friendships i don't i don't invest in like okay this is just a quick thing let's be friends bye that's just not my thing it's never been my thing i feel like if i'm about to become like deeply close friends with somebody then we're gonna go hard and like that's just it like i will be there for you you'll be there for me we'll show up for each other and i want this person to be a part of my life not someone who i just see someone that i keep good relationships with even outside for decades and decades to come i value my friendships like that that's just how i see it because i don't believe in people just being a time passing person i want you to be somebody who's around forever i want you to be somebody that i spend a good portion of my life with and that's all about quality i feel like after getting rid and just not even forcing yourself in places where people might be fake and if not fake just off you know how some people like you just kind of feel off from them they don't necessarily seem like the type of person you want to be friends with, they could be good people. There's nothing wrong with that. But they're just not your type of person. Like, it's just kind of awkward. Like, you might have some very big moral differences. There might be some things that just don't sit right with you. Don't force yourself. The longer you entertain what isn't for you, the longer you delay what is for you. And that's how I see all relationships in life. You are literally 
no need to force yourself to put up in some relationship and some friendship whatever with somebody who you feel like isn't your person so many people put up with other people that aren't really their person because they don't want to be alone but it's like the longer you're putting up with this the longer you're missing out what is actually for you i personally don't put up with any relationships any friendship nothing that i don't think is something that i want for the rest of my life right like i don't treat people like a time passer i don't treat people like any of those things because it's absolutely inhumane in my eyes and i think that it's just it's so unacceptable and even morally and religiously it sits so wrong with me but when we are talking about generally like don't force yourself to be friends with somebody don't force yourself to get to know somebody for marriage or try to like get married to them or whatever don't force yourself to be friends with this group of people whatever it might be if you don't feel like that's your person you are literally in no condition to do that you don't have to and i get it that a lot of times you're like i don't want to be alone i don't want to be alone but it's really not that bad being alone and i can promise you one thing for a fact and i'll tell you this right now if you don't learn how to be alone god will teach you how to be alone that's just it so many people People run to get married because they don't want to be alone guess what you're gonna learn that lesson on how to learn to be alone and learn to love god and be in god's presence and just have god with you you're gonna learn that regardless learning to be alone is a pretty vital part of life and if you think that rushing to relationship after relationship or friendship or this or that or these different situations whatever it might be it's going to make you feel like less alone it's really not because ultimately you're entertaining a bunch of things and a bunch of people that aren't your people one thing that I always tell people in general is like, even within friends, but even relationships, like you want to look at this person and think like, wow, this person is genuinely so nice. Like how, how, how often do you hear that? Genuinely so nice. Not often. A lot of times you look at somebody's moral, their dean, their character, whatnot, and that's amazing and you should look at those things. But also like, is somebody just a genuinely nice, kind person who's supportive, who listens, who understands those little things, who remembers what you said? who wants to make things right like you need to think about those things because how often is it that you are in relationships and friendships and you're just saying 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 but it just feels like you're talking to a wall or it just doesn't feel as hurt you don't feel hurt in some relationships and in some friendships with people you can talk to them and you can vent to them and you can tell them everything and although there might not be a solution to your problem they give you such a good feeling and they just listen to you so well and so deeply and so wholly with full attention that's really all you can ask for at times so please keep that in mind these relationships that you have in your life can be so deep and so beautiful and so kind and filled with so much support stop entertaining these surface level friendships that you know you're using as a time pass especially if they're fake people there's nothing wrong with having like a friend that you just kind of have at school or like somebody just kind of see at work like obviously there's boundaries and levels to every relationship and whatnot but like especially in the sense of fake relationships or putting up with people that are off like don't force it you literally don't have to i just went off on like a whole tangent but that covered quite a few questions which talked about like fake friends some things about ramadan and whatnot but truly like and i feel like being in ramadan really taught me these things because just putting yourself first and then limiting the access people have to you and just being like this is my time for god this is my time to worry about me this is my time for this like being more involved in you and in those meaningful relationships it just changes everything and it's it's so much more peaceful and better for you Hmm, look into the questions. Yikes, bro. The next one's heavy. Is studying medicine generally a good choice for girls with all the circumstances? Pass. Skip. And they not assist in it. Um, okay. Okay. Here's the thing. I believe that it's very important for women to get educated and for women to obviously get educated not just in dean but also in important things i think that it is important to obviously have women in medicine and whatever in the third and whatnot in the third etc etc like i believe on all those things here's where i will tell you something that's my sole opinion i think that i do feel like it's a problem when in the muslim community we're kind of making like a choice we're like okay so do you want to get educated or do you want to get married because women can do both um but the thing here that i will say is this i know a lot of people in my family that have studied medicine that have done the years that have done it all okay here's what i'll say i also know a lot of people and i just i read up on this a lot whenever i get time 
from people's experiences that are surgeons, that are in those fields that require at least 10 plus years. And I'm going to tell you my thoughts. I do think that if this is something you want to pursue, it's me- it's doable. It is. It's manageable. And you have that family support system with you and make sure you're doing it in the most halal way possible and make sure that you are being careful about everything and just managing you, your lifestyle, whatever. And like, you know, if you want to do it, like go for it, right? But the thing is, I'm going to be also honest right now and I'm going to say it. As a girl, if you are doing it because your family wants you to do it and in actuality, you don't have much of a mind to do it, well, within itself, you shouldn't go into healthcare if you don't really want to do it. I'll say that right now because we see so many problems where there's so much just plain out. How do I say this? It's just plain mistreatment. I guess you could say plain mistreatment where, you know, just a while back on social media, a video. And quite a few of these videos have been on social media surface about how some babies are being treated when they're born. And it's just kind of crazy in different areas. It doesn't matter where. Every area of healthcare is very big and it's vast and there's so much to talk about. I really wouldn't recommend someone to go in it unless you truly want to do it, right? Speaking of healthcare as a whole. Because healthcare, some fields in healthcare are hard. And they're supposed to be. If you want to be honest, they're supposed to be. Not everybody's supposed to become those things. Not everybody should be those things. That's just that. And I know that that might sound a little harsh, but that's just it. Like the schooling for some of those things is hard. There's some classes where if you do not get 100 on every exam, you get kicked out of the program. Okay. It's vicious. I'm telling you. It's it's fight or it's, it's life or death right here. Okay. You girl, I've seen, I get it. Especially in college. Some professors, some teachers, I know firsthand. <laughs> there are some that take a lot of pride in their class passing with just a C. And when, and this happens a lot, where when we see certain students excel and get A's or B's in their class, they start to kind of get suspicious on them. And I actually know a few stories where some people worked their butt off and got a well-deserved high grade on a test. And the teacher was like, but I'm feeling suspicious on how you did that. So I want to monitor you and do it. And they had to retake it. And they got that A again. So obviously, she had to get off their back, but rightfully so, the education is rough. At some degree, obviously, the content is hard. The professors and whatnot making it harder is just another discussion, and it's unbearable. And I do agree that our system, to some degree, it's painful. What they put doctors and residency, painful. I have a family member, I have a few family members who I've seen do it, and even people near me and close to me that I know who've done it, painful. I know some people who've gotten married and they've had kids and it's been very, it was very hard. You need a very supportive partner. I'll say that. If you want to go for this, you having a supportive partner really helps because they had kids and had to keep relocating or they had to do this or, you know, after match day, like something different came up than your plans. Like you got to be really, really like ready to be ready to move if you have to. Again, I'm not saying that it's not possible because when people say stuff like this, people are like discouraging, trying to discourage women and whatnot. I'm just saying like, you want to go into this, then be ready. Be ready and be wholeheartedly honest with yourself that you're doing it for you. I know that a lot of people go in it for their parents and because my parents want me to, don't go into healthcare because of your parents. And especially if we're talking about like doctor, surgeon, like going above and beyond on those things that take years 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 and countless sacrifices and just every your everyday life is just filled with so much work and so much studying and so much you know we're talking content is hard the professors in some areas are just pain some professors will genuinely make you start the semester with a grade of zero and you have to work your way up and the content is hard i've seen it i'm telling you you gotta want it right but when it comes to, again, like healthcare, there's different areas. Some areas obviously are a little bit more easier to get into as compared to the other. And of course, have being a, becoming a doctor, surgeon and going above and beyond is very hard. Obviously, yes, like I said, you got to want it. But at the same note, I'm also going to say this. And Mela, forgive me if I'm wrong for saying this, but I'm just going to be honest. 
this is nothing to be shamed about okay this is nothing shameful to say i believe that this is something it's a noble job it's a great job some women they don't necessarily want to go to college and they want to settle down and get married and have kids that's great there's nothing wrong with that i don't know why people shame women who decide that they want to settle down or they don't want to work or they have a degree and they don't want to work and they want to raise kids and be a mother that's the most noble job allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has certain you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given certain rights over you and certain rights that you have on people whatever it might be you have roles and responsibilities and the role and the responsibility that a woman has first and foremost that god has told her to do are the most important before you are a doctor before you are this before you are that whatever roles and responsibilities as a daughter to your parents as you know somebody's wife whatever it might be they're important and you want to make sure that you're fulfilling them because a lot of times going on that journey of obtaining the higher education is amazing and you should do it you know of course in the halal setting the best way you can you should go for it if that is something that you are deeply passionate about but make sure that you are fulfilling the rights responsibilities and the roles that you are in right now okay and it's very sensitive and it is very it's hard i get it but we have a problem where we tend to look down on women who don't want to work or women who just don't want to go on and get more education or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. Really. Like, you want to stay at home and you want to have kids. You've met a man that you love and you're like, I want to have his kids and I just want to be a mom, whatever. And even if, like, generally you just got married, like, and again, rights, roles, responsibilities, whatnot. Like, you want to have kids, you want to take care of the home, you want to do this, you want to do that. Like, this is now what you feel like is something for you. Then why, why are women being shamed for that? And I don't get, I really don't get why. I see videos all the time on social media where some Muslim women who are stay-at-home wives or they're just stay-at-home moms and they're taking care of their family and their home and whatnot and they're doing everything. Um, people in the comments will literally leave the most Islamophobic, hateful comments ever. And then I'll see videos where it's like non-Muslim women saying like, oh, I'm a stay-at-home mom and here's why. And everyone would be like, you're doing great. Clap, clap. You're doing great. Like, you're amazing. And obviously, you know, people have like their own perceptions and some obviously being Islamophobic about women and how like Muslim women are apparently like so oppressed and whatever in the third. But I think being a mother is the most noble job. It's the hardest job. It's incredibly difficult. I don't know why people take it so lightly and are kind of like oh, okay you're just a mom though you're just at home though which honestly opens up another root of problems because again in my opinion like be vocal about it if you don't see yourself getting married marriage is not something in your path that you are just not into that's okay that's one thing if marriage is something that you're like i need i want to get married so badly like i'm praying it's in your cousin every day and night like keep that option in your mind and be open to it like if you feel like you know i want to not necessarily get a higher education then you know people also correlate higher education with having a purpose and a passion and then that people who don't do it don't have that that's not true you know so many people that don't go to college that didn't go to college that didn't get a master's that didn't get a phd that didn't go above and beyond and they have so many passions they have so many things that they love to do they've created so many amazing things it's not you know, education is not necessarily correlated with passion and higher purpose and even being just a well-rounded, knowledgeable person. There's plenty of people that didn't go above and beyond, that didn't go to college, that didn't go to these places, and they're very knowledgeable. They know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. So it's not a correlation. It's, again, like, if you have that passion, you want to do that. It's something you like to do. Some people, like I said, you want to become a doctor. This is something you love. Then it's like, okay, hello, it's like, good luck, you know, whatever. Stay safe. Good luck, girly. Have fun. You go forth for it. But I know that you also want to be mindful that you aren't doing it for your parents. And that's really my biggest disclaimer, my biggest advice. Obviously, make sure that you're doing in a halal setting the best way that you can. Make sure that you are being mindful of your Islamic boundaries and making sure that you're doing everything correctly. Make sure that you are being mindful of your deen. Make sure you're being mindful of the rights, roles, and responsibilities that you have. But also understand that do it truly obviously for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake first and foremost but like don't do it because like your parents are telling you i have some family that is like i said i know someone right now that is studying to become a doctor and i talked to this person a while ago and when i went home to visit and he was stirred up like bro i was brainwashed what was i thinking what was i thinking i don't want to do this anymore and he was two years in and he was like bro like i did it for our parents but like now no right and i also know some people that are starting to become lawyers so the thing here is that with any field really 
you gotta want it and you gotta be ready you just really gotta be ready some things are hard because they're meant to be hard not everybody should be able to do it and i don't disagree with the fact that in residency and just being underpaid it's a lot bro for me personally not something that i'm into it's not that passion that drive it's not in me right for to become a doctor surgeon it's not in me for that bro this is like the first time in a late night q and ep that like one question has rounded us to like four different and answered so many so i'm scrolling through because i'm answering some of them right now um usually when i do dua i feel ashamed and shy that the only time i do it is when i feel bad or i need something no why do you think like that don't think like that always remember allah in your bad times but also remember him in your good times okay that's one thing but you shouldn't feel bad you're asking the one who put you here you're asking allah to help you you're asking allah to guide you you shouldn't feel ashamed to ask god for something at first i used to kind of feel like that too and i was like oh i asked a little, a little too much just a little mm, no but now i'm like no 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 no. i'm coming with my list i'm coming i'm coming to talk and you should why not there is nothing to feel ashamed about allah loves those that make dua to him that call out to him allah is not like the human beings he's not like you know these are the relationships that you have but when you ask somebody for something they get tired they get annoyed of you it's not like that god is not like that learn about allah's attributes and allah's 99 names and learn about allah as a whole and you will see over time and even just talking to him god is not like that god does not mind when you ask him for something a hundred times or when you repeat something a thousand times when a situation that's upsetting you you talk to him about it he doesn't mind at all okay next one I'm trying to get as many as I can, but I, I literally went off on a tangent. What's your guilty pleasure? Oh my god. Oh, I have quite a few. Okay. Set me free in a Michaels or like a Hobby Lobby. Yeah, that, that right there is one. <laughs> that, one right, that one right there is one. And it's... Well, don't worry like i'm not i'm not out of pocket like i'm not i'm not like an overspender or anything like that but like those stores like set up set up a camp because you know okay y'all know mm, i always take one thing to another thing y'all know how growing up this might not be everybody's core memory but your mom used to take you to the store and like she used to buy pots and pans bro if you know you know like if you know you know bro like this might be niche for some people but like if you know you know like your mom used to be like, okay, get up, like, we're gonna go to the store, and, like, you used to get so excited, bro, like, you used to, like, get all ready and everything, like, when you were, like, nine or ten, and then your mom used to take you to the store, and, like, y'all used to be going to the aisles, and you're thinking, like, wow, like, this is the trip, bro, and, like, you used to pa pass by, like, the aisles where, like, the pots and pans are, and you're like, bro, like, I really hope she doesn't see it, I really hope she doesn't see it, I really, look, bro, like, I'm gonna make her do a U-turn, like, I, I hope she doesn't see it, and then she sees it, and then it was like, you might as well just bring, like, a little tent and, like, sleep the night because mom would be like oh my god is this non-stick flip upside down what is this oh my god how many quarts is this oh and then you know the pressure cookers oh my god no oh my god the pressure cookers bro the pressure cookers oh my god oh my god even now that i'm older bro like whenever we go to throw my mom i see the aisle bro i said mom turn around turn around let's take the car let's turn around or if she's about to go and she's about to do a whole pots and pans day i'm like have fun queen i'll see you when you get home because there's just no way bro and like when it was pressure cooker shopping bro mm, mm. core memory unlocked story time part two i when i was younger and we first moved to brooklyn new york obviously my parents when they were like fresh immigrants and everything and we met with like some other families that were also that one of my best friends obviously that i grew up with now um they used to go shopping together like we used to like have a day where like we used to like go shopping sometimes for necessities like pots and pans and whatever and um like everybody used to go and at the time like all the kids were too young to be left home alone so our moms used to take us and we all collectively knew like we were there we were like bro like yeah we're about to like pull an all-nighter at this point because the moms they're gonna have a they're gonna have a field trip at the pots and pans section and they did they did and i remember me and my friend like we've done some really stupid stuff in a store before and like we used to get lost all the time i also had this problem when i was younger that i used to get lost all the time in like stores like i used to go to the store my mom used to say to me hold my hand never 
run away. I used to run away and like go to like the Play Doh aisle or something, and like or like coloring books. And then I used to get lost and I used to cry. Oh my God, core memory unlocked, y'all. Everything is just unlocking itself. One time, I got so lost, bro. Like I was devastated. I was so convinced, like ninety nine point nine percent, bro. I was convinced. I was like, my parents have went home without me in the car. How? how? Like, how does that even make sense? I don't even understand how little Hero thought that made sense. How would your parents drive home without you, right? But like, her, little Hero was like, she was sure. Like, she was sure with the back of her hand, bro. She was like, they went home without me. Th- they did. Mm-hmm, they did. And like, the store was humongous, and I was just wandering. And then I started crying. Like, I was very little, okay, before you say anything. I was, I started crying in the store aisles everywhere, bawling, bawling, bawling my eyes out. And like, store employees were like, okay, what does your mom look like? And I was like, no, I want my mom. And I used to be crying. And then I was like, okay, look, the smartest thing for me to do is to sit near the exit of the door, sit near the store exit, because that way, if my parents are leaving, they'll rep they'll remember and then i sat there and then i saw my mom and i was like i ran up to her and she was like just chill she was like i told you not to leave my hand (laughs) and i got mad embarrassed for crying like that but it's okay we've all done it when we were little it's fine i'm dead the next question i don't even know how to answer it says is your personality the same in person (laughs) yes it is it honestly is but i think i'm a little bit more hyper in person i'm not sure i feel like i can't answer I feel like that's something for someone else to tell me, but I, I'm, I think I'm the same in person. I'd like to believe I am. I think I am. Hmm. Next question: How to deal with my husband, who has what is this? Hold on. Okay. Okay. How to deal with my husband who has a really short temper and gets angry at everything. Sad face. Oh my god. First of all, I hope you feel better, and I hope it gets better. Wow. Um. Wow. Oh, okay. I feel like it's very hard being in those relationships. I think that everything is subjective and you cannot just tell somebody, leave, like a relationship, like just, oh, you should leave it, you know, because you don't know the depth of everything. I think that definitely if somebody has anger problems, it's something that they should sort through within themselves. And a lot of times, unfortunately... People who do have anger problems don't recognize it and they don't, if they do, they don't care to fix it. So him being short-tempered, I think the first thing that I would tell you that comes to my mind and for anybody in this situation is I'm honestly worried for your safety. And that is something that I don't want to say, but it is something that I will be clear about that these situations, being with somebody who's short-tempered, you know, it's like, it's very scary and if somebody's short-tempered and they like leave you know it's like kind of one thing and that can start to root and create lots of different feelings and sometimes even feelings of like you're being abandoned by your spouse because when you want them to be there the most they're leaving or when you want them to help and fix it out they're leaving so that can be one thing but especially when it comes to the sense of physical and you are worried for your safety i think that that comes before anything people will tell you to have sabr but when we are talking about physical and like those anger issues and whatnot like you really have to take care of your safety and i think that it is something that definitely obviously and i hate to give this answer it is something that you should get help for for him for sure but also be kind of If you are worried about your safety, I'd recommend being a little open about it with somebody that you can trust. You know, you do not want to give your relationship problems to people. And a lot of times we are told, even by most knowledgeable people, that try your best to keep your relationships problems. Like, you know, the petty little fights that you and your husband might have. Like, that's one thing. But when we're talking about, like, anger issues and we're talking about short temper, we're talking about, like, you being in danger. Or we're talking about those things, like, it's important to have mediation and to kind of be open i guess you could say because unfortunately a lot of women have gotten you know in situations that weren't the best by not being open about the fact that their husband might be a type of way again no one's saying that you know in essence to expose his sins to your family and to 
the third like you know go above and beyond and like shame him in the community nobody's saying that it's just you kind of might want to make it a little bit known maybe to someone near you that if you feel like your safety is at something that's something you should talk about if honestly it's obviously a matter of communication but i don't want to sit here and be like oh you should communicate because no duh no duh obviously but communication obviously should help inshallah i hope but if it doesn't that's where like you kind of have to set that ground and be like i don't feel that comfortable until you at least are showing that you're trying to sort this issue within yourself and whether that is with going to therapy or with obviously also getting help from religious leaders like that anger is not something good obviously for one's own self and even in general if we're talking about a sense of safety that like i mentioned you want to be careful and generally just throwing this out there not saying for this sister in particular in general if you are putting up with abuse in the name of sabr we don't need this from you god does not want you to hurt yourself like this please leave you do not need to put yourself through abuse putting up with abuse doesn't mean that you have sabr that you know it's the best thing for you and that this is the prime definition of sabr because in our communities in our especially culturally we teach women that the only definition of sabr is when they put up with abuse that their husband gives them it's not true that's not true and obviously bearing with all that requires patience no duh but that doesn't mean that you just stop and say this is patience so i'm not going to take any action to get myself out of it so that's what i would recommend for that I don't think that was the best piece of advice ever. These are very sensitive matters that I think would require more knowing. It, it would something that you kind of tell more to your local religious leaders maybe and have them kind of evaluate and see what's best for you in that circumstance because not everything is clear in the picture here with a small question. But on that note, I hope that you guys can use this as a moment to kind of educate yourself to be careful. If you are somebody who is trying to get married, Please make sure that the person you're getting married to does not have like, you know, anger problems or short temper problems, whatever in the third. You want to get married to somebody who's genuinely nice and will have a soft, kind heart towards you. Someone who does not want to hurt you. Someone who's, you know, all those things and above. And of course, has good deed and good character and whatnot. But that anger factor is very important because when somebody is angry, they might say things that hurt you for sure. But if they do things, and of course their words can do this as well, that make you feel unsafe and that makes you feel like you can't rely on them, this is going to pour into every single aspect of your relationship. That's just that. That's how I see it, right? Because for some people, anger issues is not that big of a deal. Because they say, well, if he has anger issues like, and he just leaves, like it's fine. I don't see that as a priority. That's not in my top 10. Anger issues is a big thing. Of course, speaking in the realm of abuse, it's a big thing but even outside of that if someone's very short-tempered and angry and they're quick to just get up and leave or they're quick to like do those things you want to be very careful because you might think that oh well i just won't do anything to get him angry you know there's genuinely some girls that are like oh, i just won't do anything to get him angry that doesn't make any sense okay you are a human being you might make mistakes and you want someone who's understanding through all of that someone who's kind-hearted and whatever in the third but you really don't want to put yourself in a realm where you are risking you and your safety and just you as a whole. Moreover, like I'm saying, somebody leaving you, abandoning you when you need them the most or hurting you physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever it might be. These things, even if you apologize, you say sorry, you move on. Inshallah, here, like, you know, if you are seeing this person's trying to fix it, then that's like one thing, right? Like you're trying to fix it abuse is another thing taking abuse out the picture right now in this discussion when you were having a fight with your significant other or like short tempers whatever like you know those things they're they're big and they leave big impacts you want to be careful about what you say how you say it. you want to be careful to not put yourself and not be in that situation in the first place and to mediate things in the most calmest way possible because that's the only way really you're going to get a solution um be calm don't get so quick to get angry and to assume Sometimes it's better to not make a judgment, just let things play out on their own. But again, removing physical abuse from the situation, the way that someone is there for you really makes you trust them, right? And so if you feel like you're having a hard time with this person, they're like never there for you, or they they always leave you when you're at your lowest, right? Like in some relationships, they the significant other, like 
I hate to say this because it's not just men who do this because I bet there are women who do this as well. But I know some women who are like, I genuinely can't cry in front of my husband. And I genuinely can't like be emotional or be sad or be vulnerable. Or share those things in front of my husband because he gets pissed off. Like he gets ticked off by it. And like, he's like, oh, stop crying. It makes me mad. Whatever. And third, I once heard a whole story about this. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I once heard a whole story about a girl who shared how she was basically not allowed to cry in front of her ex at the time because he said that it was manipulation so he had like a strike system and like every time she cried he was like no like if you cry one more time i'm leaving you and i was like what the hell whoa dude like that's like that's crazy that's crazy it's robotic bro but like having that type of relationship like you can't cry you can't be vulnerable oh, like you have a problem you have to like shut up and not share it like yikes and this all starts to pour into the trust factor and i feel like without trust it's love becomes hard so a lot of things compile on each other just be wise and be careful i think that this episode was very long but i'm not sure because i'm recording in segments if i said anything wrong may love forgive me um because a lot of things that i said need a lot of more clarification but there's only so much i can say in a certain given time may love forgive me if i said anything wrong please take care of yourself i'm gonna try to answer the rest of my questions and another ep inshallah please take care of yourself have a great rest of your day assalamualaikum